Hi, I'm Brian Vance, WorldWideTrackier.com, and today we're going to break down the Driven Captive Wheel Spacer on our 2018 Suzuki GSX-R 1000R STG Project Bike. Okay, if you're doing tire changes frequently, which is something that happens if you have a thousand and you take it to the racetrack, you're gonna be eating some tires. That's the way it is. You wanna go fast, it's gonna cost you some money, and you're gonna be taking the wheels off fairly frequently. The OEM wheel spacers that come on this bike are actually lightweight. They feel like they're aluminum, right? So Suzuki did everything they could to lighten this bike up for sure. But once again, they're not captive, they just fall out. In the front, you know, it's not that bad really at the end of the day. This kit from Driven does include one for the front as well that pops in. But the rear is a whole nother story. If I had a nickel for every time I was putting a rear wheel on this bike and hit the spacer on the cush drive side, just tickle it. Thing falls on the ground. You're like, man, I'm already all the way there. I got this thing going back on. We're good. And there goes the spacer. So you got to bend down. We're starting over again. The captive wheel spacers from Driven, they take care of that. Installation of them is very simple. You're going to remove the stock ones. There's a lip on these that slides past the seal, holds them in place. I recommend putting a little lubrication on the inside of the seal, right? Just best practice. They work, they help with tire changes, and they're also anodized red and they just look freaking cool. If you want to see what it takes to get this install done, we'll show you every step of the way right after this. Okay, now let's install the Driven Captive Wheel Spacers on our GSX-R1000 rear wheel. I've got the two right here on the rag. They're going to fit in the rear. We'll pull the one out on the rotor side first to identify which one that's going to be. The smaller lip is going to pass through the seal and be retained by the seal itself. Okay, so this is the one we're going to put in on the brake side. I like to put just a, a thin film of grease on the inside lip of that seal. It's just going to help keep it lubricated. Okay, once again, the smaller lip goes towards the inside. And you want to kind of work that in there like so. And you want to go all the way around it and make sure that the lip of the seal has not been deformed, okay? So that looks good. Lip looks as it should. We'll flip the wheel over and work on the cush drive side. That spacer is right here. Okay, so that's gonna be the larger of the two, obviously. Same thing, you get just a little bit of grease. It's also a good opportunity to clean the wheel up. You know, if you've got it off and there's some grime, you know, don't be afraid to just take a second and get some SC1 or something, clean it up. The spike's pretty clean, so really not a lot to do there now. All right, we'll push this one in. These are just going to make the tire changes a whole heck of a lot easier. By keeping that spacer in there, they love to dip out at just that Right, the stock ones will fall out at that perfect moment when you just about got everything dialed in. And all of a sudden, boop, there goes your spacer. Okay, now before I put the rear wheel back on, I like to clean and lube the axle with a little bit of Maxima MPPL. Just to make sure it doesn't season there. It allows the slide through a little bit easier. Okay, now we're ready to put the wheel back on. I'm gonna make excuses before I even start. This is one of those things, this is a lot harder to do on the work table than it is to do on the ground. I don't have my foot or anything to help support the rear wheel. It makes it a little bit tougher, so we need to get it past that rear cow. Just kind of roll it in like so. Once you've done that, get the wheel squared up. Always be cognizant of that rear wheel speed sensor. That thing is key to functionality of all well, the anti-lock brakes and of course, you know, all the electronics that really help make this bike special. Okay, once we get going here, what I'm gonna do is kind of get my hand underneath it. Okay. 
to help support it like so. You get the chain to come over. And now we're ready for the axle. Once we get that started, it gets a whole lot easier, okay? The caliper hanger lined up. Love using the work table. It makes the videos a whole lot smoother, but man, it makes putting that rear tire on a whole heck of a lot tougher. Okay, once we've done that, let's get our axle nut back on. We're using the light tech chain adjuster, so realistically the chain tension is gonna be right where we left it. I do still like to just put a wrench in between the sprocket and the chain. Gonna roll that back. Just make sure everything's pushed as far forward as possible. Gonna use our torque wrench. I realize this is probably mind blown right now because for years I've never done this, but I decided to set a better example. Switch it up a little bit. And there we go. The rear wheel is up. Okay, so we're going to begin by removing the wheel. Got to take off calipers from both sides. to 12 mil. Okay, front axle. I always leave the pinch bolts tight, it makes breaking the axle nut loose a whole heck of a lot easier. Our pinch bolts. Both sides. And the axle. And out comes the front wheel. Okay, for the front captive spacer, we only have one. So we'll just pull that out of the wheel. Take the opportunity here to just clean that up. This wheel's already really clean, so there's not a lot of dirt here. Just a real thin film of grease inside the lip. I don't need to get too carried away there. The smaller lip is going to go in towards the wheel. Kind of push that in on an angle, a little downward pressure, and then you want to look all the way around it to make sure the lip of the seal is not folded under. Everything looks good, and we're just about ready to reinstall the wheel. Something I like to do each time I remove and reinstall front or rear axle, I like to just kind of clean and lube it a little bit. Just takes a second. A little MPPL, or if you have WD-40, you could use that too. Just kind of cleans it while putting just a thin film of lubrication on it. Now we can roll the wheel under and reinstall it. Okay, now let's roll it under. Slide it into position. Get your axle in there. And push it through. For sure, the front is a whole heck of a lot easier than that rear. OK, 
Okay, slid through really easily once we got it lined up. And that's a sign that everything in the front end is aligned nicely. If it takes a lot of effort to push it through something maybe out of a line, twisted. And now, I'll show you the process I use to reinstall it. Okay, so I like to start by snugging the axle up. I have not touched the pinch bolts yet. There's a lot of friction and pressure there, so oftentimes you can even torque it like I just did, and I didn't even touch the pinch bolts. Okay, now I'll follow up with the pinch bolts. These I don't use a torque wrench on. This is more about reasonable torque. A couple of passes, make sure they're even. Do that on both sides, and they'll be ready for the calipers. Okay, let's slide the caliper into position. To clear that rotor, you gotta watch your wheel speed sensor harness here. To dip over, make sure the pads are spread apart enough while it slide over. Get your bolt started. I'm going to run them down a bit. But I will not torque these. I got like a final step I use before I torque them down. So we'll just get them you know, kind of bottomed out now. And we'll repeat this same process on both sides. Okay, now once I've got both calipers on there, like I said, the fasteners aren't tight. I'm just going to pump up the brakes real lightly. Then I like to just kind of spin the wheel. I'm holding the brake right now. Once I have the brake held in place, I'm going to go ahead and tighten up the caliper bolts on both sides. Okay, so there you saw the rear wheel install. Trust me when I tell you it was definitely easier because almost every time I put the rear wheel on this bike, I have knocked a spacer out almost every single time. And I do, I'm gonna use the excuse again, it's a lot harder to do on this table. You throw your arm under there, you know, now you've only got one hand to work with getting the axle through. At the end of the day, that went really smooth. I'm excited to have the bike at the track for the next wheel change and see how much faster it goes when you're on the ground. When you're on the ground, if I'm using a pit bull stand, I'll have that pit crew tire wedge underneath it. If I'm using this Woodcraft stand, what I'll do is I'll just slide my foot underneath the rear wheel to support it, and it just makes it so much easier when you have two free hands. So I would say at the end of the day, I've already seen the benefit from this.